Hello, hello, hello. I am finally actually live. Oh my gosh, that took forever. My things changed since the last time I did this. So I'm going nuts. I'm going to real quickly um, let me get this rearranged again. And I'm going to check something out. I want to see. Okay, so you can see that. I just want to look at a couple things to make sure that this is actually live like it's supposed to be. This has been my software. They had an upgrade, and it was really funny because um, when I initially meant to do this on Thursday, my phone showed everything blue. So anything that had any kind of a red tone to it was completely blue. And I'm like, well, this isn't going to work. When I'm using blends. So how are we going to, you know, how am I going to do this? Um, it says I'm live. Okay. I hope the sound is okay. I can't really, I don't have anything to look at now to watch myself. So, but I do hope the sound is okay. So I'm going to go back to my screen. So I'm glad they we finally got that fixed. Apparently, I don't know if it was just they, they initiated a new upgrade and it caused, um, they were trying to fix some bugs, but in the process caused more bugs. So it, it, made, it made it a whole lot of fun for those of us who hadn't used it since then and then upgraded and we no longer had, you know, it's funny because it was only Android devices. And I figured that out because I tried both my phone and my husband's phone, which are both Androids. They're Samsungs. And his is a little newer than mine. So I thought, well, maybe it's just a problem with my phone because I do need to upgrade it. And his phone did the same thing. And I'm like, oh, this isn't right. So I tried my Touch, my iPod Touch. It showed it perfectly. So I'm like, okay, there's a bug in the system with the Android. So they figured it out for me. I had to log off of everything and log back in on all the devices. And now it works perfectly and I'm so happy. So hello everyone. I am Julie from Stampin' Julie. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the United States, actually in Arizona. And my cat's going to come poke her face up here in a minute. You'll probably see her back. Yep, there's her back and her tail. <laughs> she's the only one allowed in here when I do these. So, because she's actually, she's really pretty good. My other cat, he actually likes to bring in his hairball and drop it on my, he has a play hairball, uh, drop it on my desk and bounce around and play with it and stuff. So, I usually have to shut my door for this um, or they would all be in here wondering, who are you talking to? Mom, I'm going to come in and visit you. So, you'll probably see her a little bit because all of a sudden she's in a mood to want some love. And I can't really lock her out because the other cats pick on her if I do. So, I need some water. Mouth is already going dry. So, it is Saturday here in the U.S. It's 4.30. I'm a half hour late. Ugh. I had this all set up and ready to go until the last second. I couldn't hear nothing. So, I'm glad we're going. So, today what I'm going to be showing is how to use the wonderful, absolute wonderful stamping blends. I'm so excited about this. Um, I've been wanting to do this one for a while because I know a lot of people are hesitant on buying alcohol markers because they're not quite sure how to use them. I've seen people using them all different ways, whether they just use one, because you get two of each color. You can buy them singly, one at a time, or you can buy them in its color group. And this one happens to be Flirty Flamingo, and you get a dark Flirty Flamingo and you get a light Flirty Flamingo. And you'll get that in all the colors. I'm hoping eventually Stampin' Up! has all the colors available to us because there's one I'm noticing that we don't have and it's a medium blue. We have balmy blue which I absolutely love and I'm so happy this was in the uh, occasions catalog and then we have night and navy but we don't have anything in the middle so I'm hoping there's a pacific point or the new in color blueberry bushel will give us um, that medium blue that I'm looking for. I was trying to color something the other day and I wanted a medium blue and I didn't have it. So seems to be that since they released them with each new catalog, you know, when the annual catalog came out that we had more colors. Uh, when the holiday catalog we came out, it had more colors. And this past occasions catalog came out, we got two new colors. So I was happy. I was so happy to get balmy blue because I really wanted balmy blue. So 
I don't know if any of you have noticed on um, I did I did send out to the newsletter to those of a uh, who are on my newsletter page about the new Stampin' Up! blend storage that I'm so happy there is a hair floating across my thing. Um, I'm really happy and excited. She has long hair. It sheds everywhere. Uh, about the new Stampin' Blends storage is coming out because right now, part of them are in this thing, and the rest of them are over here. And I hate having to look back and forth for this stuff. So, you know, and I know that the older colors I have bought are in the tub, and the newer colors I've bought are in this. So I'm really, really glad that now we have a storage. They're going to be out on my desk. Probably, I have to find a place to put them. Um, because I can't move. There's a cat bed right there. And I can't move it because if it's not there, they'll lay everywhere else on my desk. So that cat bed ha can't move, so I can't put them there. And my big shot's right next to me. So I'm going to have to find a place. And this is actually a really large desk. So you wouldn't think I'd have a problem with space, but it's actually uh, 39 inches wide, so a little over three feet here in the U.S., by seven feet long. And it has a lot of stuff on it. Um, I actually own two Silhouette Cameos because I used to make planner stickers on Etsy, and I still use them for my own personal use. I don't have my shop anymore, but I still use, use them for my own use. And one is set for sticker paper and one set for cardstock now. Um, so I do actually use both of them still, so I can't move those. And they actually require a lot of bit of space because when the mat comes out the back, it's got to have room. My husband was really cool and made me this really little shelf thing that goes um, in the back of them because I would ha my cats would lay behind them and uh, would get hair on my mats. And so my husband made this cute little little cover that the mat goes underneath and the cats don't bother at all so, so those are actually really cool so but those take up a lot of room so but i'm really excited about the new stampin blends um if you want to hear more i'm going to put a newsletter they're available april 1st uh, we have storage for the stampin blends we'll have storage for the new ink pads um the old ink pads and of course i don't have one right here they're over there uh do not fit in it uh, just the new ink pads because they're thinner uh, and then they have like a little dip for the markers to go on the side and then there's a stampin gorge and it's all stackable you can go as high as you want they said they stacked up oh they do 50 high and it still kept you know it was it was really good and so um but it also has a little cube you can put stuff in and it has like a little um like a little container that will sit on top of them. You can put anything in your reinkers, you know, maybe like these stamp pads that won't probably fit in it. Um, but I'm really excited about those. So I'll get them out of these containers and out of my way. And here comes my cat again. She's going to visit and she's going to go lay down. I'm not quite sure what she's doing. Where are you going? Are you going to lay down or just sit there? I think you're just going to sit there. So, I'm going to get started on this real quick so this wasn't a long one today. Quick note, celebrations ends tomorrow night at 11.59 Mountain Daylight Time. Um, so everywhere else, Pacific, that's an hour earlier, you know, you know your time zone. Uh, celebration ends. So you, if you have any last minute orders you want to get in before that time, do it. There are some things that are sold out, obviously. Um, check my blog i did have a blog post that went up today uh that has a list of all the current uh items as of the time i put that up things can change between them i did not check the inventory list today so if it's sold out just pick another item there i have actually most of them i have apparently all the ones that have sold out um so i've been trying not to show them too much but please if you have any last minute orders get them in because uh, once it's gone, it's done. And also, don't forget the tote. I have it's in my uh, blog post as well. The tote that you can get if you join my team for an extra, you know, thirty dollars for one hundred and twenty-nine dollars, you're going to get one hundred and seventy-five dollars worth of product and a gorgeous, gorgeous tote that us as demonstrators can no longer order. And at the time when we order it, was more than what you're getting it for. So you're getting a steal. So jump on that. 
So let's get back to the stamp and blends. I do want to explain. We have two blank inks in the catalog. We have the Memento and we have the stays on. And people ask, which do I use with which? And this is a point I want to tell. Memento black ink, Tuxedo black ink, is a water-based ink. Therefore, when you use your Stampin' Blend markers with them, because they are alcohol, this won't run. And you want that. You absolutely want that. You do not want your black ink to run into your colors. They have to be an opposite, okay? If you were to use this, say, with the watercolors, the black ink's going to run. That's where the Stazon comes in, the Stazon black ink. This is a solvent alcohol-based ink. Because of that, you, you can use the watercolors, you can use um, the ink pads, watercolor pencils, with this and the black ink won't run, okay? That is the difference. If you were to use this blend with this black ink, it's going to run. And I do have mine marked, use with watercolor. Here she comes again. She can't make up her mind where she wants to go. And this one says use with Stampin' Blends. I deliberately did this, even though I know back and forth that I've showed people this in case, you know, you don't craft as often, I have to move my cat craft as often as I do, you know exactly which one to grab and when, okay? So, memento ink only when you're using the Stampin' Blends or any other, you know, this is the, the big, this is the ink, the black ink I use the most for all my stamping unless I'm watercoloring. Um, you can also use all the other ink pads, all the classic inks that we have. You can use them with the Stampin' Blends as well. Um, because they are water-based too. The blends, the alcohol in the blends doesn't make the black smear. I've greatly been asked that a lot of questions, what with what? So that is specifically why my stamp pad says use with stamping blends or anything else. The only time I use the stays on is if I am watercoloring and that's it. Um, it is a very, you have to use the special cleaner it's available in the catalog to really get it off your ink pads. And so I, I try not to, to use it too much unless I am actually watercoloring. I have given up soda. This is strange because I've been drinking Pepsi all my life. And for the past week, I've drank nothing but water. So, which has actually made my husband happy because that's all he drinks is water. So, and I actually do not like the taste of water. I do like lemon in my water, um, but the lemon, after a while, irritates my mouth, even though it's in a real small amount, irritates my mouth, and I don't drink it as much. So, if you are commenting, um, I hope you are. I can't see it right now um, because my eye touch... I had to upgrade, well, it upgraded itself, and I haven't been able to get everything back onto it, so, which is driving me crazy. <laughs> so if you are commenting, I promise I will get back to the comments. I hope this is being heard fine. I tested, I did a small test before I started this, and my sound sounded okay. So if you have any questions, I will get back to them. I promise as soon as this is done, I will, if you're watching this on replay later, this will also be on YouTube. So we're going to go ahead and switch down to my kitty tabletop. Oh, and it actually looks pretty good in focus. Earlier it wasn't looking that great, and I was starting to worry. Okay. You can use any – I'm going to grab one more thing. Um, I'm going to grab 30, actually. I'll grab one of the other ones. Okay. This is the pad I was talking about that's going to fit inside the new stamp storage stuff. These old ones won't. So I'm more than likely not going to purchase the new uh, ones. I am going to get the one for the blends and probably the cubby and the other one. I probably won't get the one for the ink pads because my husband made me a beautiful wood thing that holds all my pads and it's perfect. It's real slim and it's out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. I am at one point, I have been working on my craft room. Uh, reorganizing and going through stuff and kind of conmaring everything in here um, slowly because I can't because of my back I can't do it in big um, I'm gonna turn the side light on Does that help 
Oh, there's too much shadow. Never mind. I have 100 watt light bulbs in my lights, and they're great for me when working, but show shadow on the cameras. Um, but uh, I've been going through everything in my room, and when I'm done, I am going to do a craft room tour of it. So let's get started. I picked a couple of different um, of of a. Uh, design ink pads that were or stamp pads that we're going to use for this so i want to get them out stamps i want to use i did try to get this done before i started but then my figuring out this all again was a nightmare so let's see. okay so i have the beautiful you and I also have, what is this one, little, this little piggy are the two I'm going to do. And I will actually turn these into cards, and I'll probably have them uploaded tomorrow. Because in St. Being the Last Day Celebration, I do want to get something on. So, I'm going to get out my Memento ink. And because you all know I have cats, I have to make sure that there is no cat hair on my stamp before I use them. Wonderful, wonderful world. Try to yeah, do it that way. There's a little bit more light in here. I plan on getting before it gets real hot here. Yes, I am in Arizona, but I live in the mountains, and so it doesn't get as hot as it does what we call the valley. We call Phoenix, Mesa, Tempe, all them, the valley. Because um, technically they're in a valley. So we don't get as hot as they do. Very rarely will we hit 100 degrees here. And about, um, can't hear now because she's on my desk. Um, see, I just inked it up. I, had, I did it right in front of me. My camera doesn't go all the way. Um, in the black ink. And I'm going to just put this. Right here. Not really. It's going to be, I'm going to cut it out later. So I'm not real worried about where I stamp it. Perfect. I always clean them off before I put them onto my stamp pad to clean them so i'm not putting excess ink onto my stamp and scrub and then we're going to do this but back to arizona um rarely do we ever get to 100 degrees we do um we usually have a little heat wave where we hit 100 it's usually not too bad um but we're usually in the high 80s 90s um but then about july the monsoons hit and we completely I'm going to leave a little space for this one. Cool off. Um, the monsoons come in, the rain comes in, and we, as soon as the sun gets covered, we're, we're in the 70s. So it's actually really, really nice. I'm going to do one more of this one. So I want to do it two different ways for you. And you, I'm going to show you this real quick. You can do this two different ways. You can either lay it down and apply ink to it or turn it over and push on the ink pad. It doesn't matter. But the bigger ones, it's usually easier to take the ink to it. Just got to make sure that there's no hair on it real quick. Okay. There we go. And again, you can do this in any of these with the blends. They work just fine, too. Just want to get this cleaned real quick. Yuck. Hair in my mouth. Cat hair, cat hair, cat hair. They're starting to shed their winter coats, and hair is going everywhere. I have a lint roller on my desk just because of cat hair. All right. So first off, I'm going to be warm. So yeah, I do live in the mountains. Um, we had we had a lot of snow this winter. Um, we actually had a foot and a half in a matter of I think six hours. Um, everything shut down in my little town, but we do get cold. We do hit negatives, um, but we don't get as hot. So. Trying to decide what color I wanted to color her dress. I know what color I'm doing the pig. So, but so I don't think I'm already having 80 degree days. I think we only hit 58 today, <laughs> which is nice. I'm not hurting, which is nice. It's the cold. It's not the cold that bothers my back. It's the constant change in the barometer pressure that bothers my back and my hands mainly a lot. So I have to watch that. 
Okay, for her, let's color her dress in lovely lipstick. Okay, so one thing I did want to show, some people just use the blends as individual little markers. You know, you have the light pink, dark pink, light blue, dark blue, and that's how they use them. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. I am going to actually zoom this in real quick to get a little closer. I know that white is going to freak out my camera a whole bunch. So I probably need to put something here for it to not be as fuzzy. Come on. Cameras in white don't work very well together. Okay, that's a little better. Let me go up just a little bit. Okay, so with shadow and highlights, that's what these these markers were meant for was to, with the shadows and the highlights um my mom used to toll paint when I was a teenager at home and she taught me a lot about this so I understood when the markers came what I was supposed to do with them so what I usually do when I have a stamp like this and I'm going to be coloring her dress in the lovely lipstick dark and light combo um all these lines on here are creases in her skirt about you know all that that's naturally what that is is the creases whenever you have a crease in clothing and you may start looking at things a little differently when you're wearing clothes and stuff or in other people is whenever there's a crease that's a dark shadow area and normally on top of the crease is, is a highlight and when you think of a ripple so what I first start to do, and a lot of times I'm using, if you notice, this comes in two, two sizes, a bullet and a brush point. I usually use a bullet um, when I'm doing the, the creases or any really, really fine point. And these are really cool. And this mark, this will sit on the back of this if you want to. I normally I usually just hold it in my other hand. So normally what I do is I start, and I just start drawing along all the black lines. You don't have to be exact. And then... I usually only try to work in a small area at a time because you are going to actually be blending these colors together. So this is where I'm going to have this out. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to have real color all the way down to the bottom here. And I sometimes I'll do it like in a little swirl. It kind of reactivates the other marker. And you don't get those harsh, harsh lines that you will see some people because they just use it like a regular, like a crayon or something. I'm going to turn this around so I'm looking away from it. And you can go back with the markers. There's no set. That's going to actually be a shadow because that's the inside of the grass. And what's nice about these is you don't see the lines. And I usually just do this over anything that had a crease and it blends out that the darker color. Now this is where her the inside of the dress is showing from underneath. So I'm actually going to completely color that in with the shadow. And this is the actually the dress on the other side. So. And you'll start noticing that when you um in any time anything crosses over anything you know just there's going to be a dark side inside like when this dress is being pulled over her leg there there's always going to be a dark side along the inside of that and of course and it all really depends a lot on where the sun the light in the room the area the outside wherever the light is coming from is going to determine where a lot of those highlights and shadows are going to be you know, with her, so I just did the dress, the skirt part first. Um, because I only like working in small areas at times that I get the better blending effect. So now we're going to do this again here along these black lines because that's naturally where the, the fabric is creasing, so you want a little more. I'm also going to get out the brush tip on this one because her hair is providing a shadow onto the back of her dress so just kind of you know there's little white spots in there and it is going to provide somewhat of a shadow and don't worry about that being really wide because we are going to blend it out when we do this 
I usually I go along the edges get the edges first and then we just sit there and we blend it in and this is going to blend out I hope you're able to see this is it really that fuzzy is it because there's too much white for the camera now if I give it something to focus on it does a little bit better and it will blend it out now with the Stampin' Blends, there is, I didn't get up this one marker, there's three separate markers that come um, as one. One of them is the lifter. This lifts, it doesn't really lift off the color, it pushes a color through the paper. The lifter with the same bullet and brush tip. There's also an ivory, and then there's a bronze. And the ivory and bronze markers are for flesh tone. I have personally liked Petal Pink better because then I'm able to do the highlight and shadow as well on anything that I want flesh toned. So with her arms, this is the dark petal pink. I'm just going to go along the bottom because that's naturally where the shadow is going to be on her. I just jumped off my desk and because this is a real tight area, I'm actually just going to use the bullet. And then I'm going to color her in. I know a lot of other people have liked using Petal Pink for flesh tone as well. Especially those of us who have pink undertones. <laughs> and we're going to do the same thing with her legs. I'm going to take the dark bullet end. Try and get my, there we go, my markers, my blocks are in my way. And just go along her leg because naturally that's where the shadow is going to be, is on the underside. And on this one down here, this one's kind of, because the dress is laying over the leg a little bit, it does provide a bit of a shadow. So I will color a little bit of that. And then I will come back with the light petal pink and blend into it. These colors are so light. But the, actually, I use them the most. I did a little pig. Where's he at? I didn't like the way I did the cloud, so I'm redoing it. That's why I stamped him again today little pig but I did do this little pig with the Stampin' Blends last night That's something got on the paper but I didn't like the way the cloud came out so I'm going to redo him or her so just blend it out. these ones are so light you, you don't see too much you don't have to blend too much as you do with the darker colors I missed a little spot I need you that's about right there and what color her should her hat be? We're making it bright and colorful for spring. Hmm. Actually, let's do. What are you? Oh, I think you're pineapple. Um. I really don't want a blue. Let's do a Bermuda Bay hat with this. So again, we're gonna take our dark. This is the dark. And naturally, where this meets the rim, it's going to be dark. And then the rest of it will be lighted out where you'll have the highlights. And you can, with once these dry and they dry pretty fast, you can go over and you will get a tad bit of a darker color, which is kind of cool. So there's those. Like I have a hair on me. I probably do. But see, I don't want to glare too much. You see, you don't have the harsh lines where I did color those, but it does give a little bit of depth to the picture. You can see along the edge here. Um, my nails are all short because they all broke all of a sudden. Um, along the edge here where it's, you know, it's the underskirt showing, so it's naturally going to be a little darker. So let's do this again. This time we're going to do the pig, because I have to do the pig again, because I want to do it for a card. Okay, this is a bit bigger of a, than the dress of the girl, so, something got on it. oh well. So, when I do it when it's a little bit bigger, is I do again first start with the darker color, and this time I am going to be the brush, because it is a bit bigger of an area that I'm coloring. And I'm actually going to draw over this line because it not only is the shadow underneath, but it's also on the edge as well. And I'm going to do the ears, the inside. 
just along the line inside the ears. This foot is, I believe, completely shadowed by the body. It all depends on where you want the light coming from. And this is going to be along his hoof. This one because he's on the ground. And then I'm going to fade it up a little bit because if I think the light's coming from this way, this is actually going to be more highlighted. So, and then, of course, under his belly here is going to be a little. And don't worry about it if you think it's a little too much because you can blend it out um, when you get the lighter on. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now we're going to get our light. And we're just going to start blending. And I'm not going to color the mouth. That's actually going to be a little different. And this is all. There's not too much on his face. And see, you know, I'm going to go right over the black. And it doesn't smudge at all. I do not have any black ink into my blends. So that's why we use the memento for blends. And for also any of my other stamping I do, um, regular stamp, or I just want a black ink, um, sentiment, anything like that, I use the memento. And the only time I use this the stays on is this if I am watercoloring. I'm going to flip this around and make it easier on a brush tip. And I don't go stabbing the brush tip into the paper. Kind of lay it sideways so you're actually, you know, kind of like brushing along. It saves on the tip and you're not destroying your tip real fast. And I'm just going to go in a little circles when I get up to my dark color and it kind of blends it out. So I don't have that real harsh line. I think my stamp stamped that real mistake, but that's okay. And we just go until we have it the way we like it. And you can just keep coloring and coloring until you have it how you like it. And there's my little pig. Now let's do his ears. The inside of the ears, the one I did earlier, I did in Flirty Flamingo. Um, so you're going to think of how an ear cups, you know, an animal, when the light's coming this way, it's naturally going to have a shadow. So we're going to take our dark. And the shadow is actually going to be right underneath here. You don't need a lot of it because this is a much darker color. Just a little bit. And then we're going to take our light. And we're just going to blend that out. And you just kind of use that little swirly motion when you get next to the line. And it kind of reactivates it a little bit. And you're able to blend it out so you don't have a harsh line between the two. Take it down. And see his little ears? Now that's a really good, it's a lot easier to see on that where there's a shadow and then where it's a highlight. And if you get an area where you really, really want it highlighted, you take this, the lifter, and it has a brush as well. And what this really does, the ink doesn't come off on this, which is really cool. You really only need one. Say I want it really light on the edges down here. It kind of like pushes the, because there's no ink. See, there's no ink. It's just like just it's the solvent of the alcohol without a color added to it. And you can really tell. And don't do this a whole bunch. Do a little. Wait for it because it takes a couple seconds for it to start reacting. You can see how much the outside of his ears have actually changed. And I did this one just like this one, but I didn't highlight on this one. And you can see the difference of how much that actually edged it. So use this one very sparingly. Do a little bit. Wait a couple seconds to see how it reacts because it just, what it basically does, wow, cat hair, it just pushes the ink through the paper a little bit. It doesn't pull it off. So you don't have to worry about having anything back here. It doesn't go anywhere. I just have this for the camera so because my desk is white. So the next thing we're going to do is give him a cute little pink nose. I'm actually going to use the bullet to do that. And then the underneath because it's a little darker. And we're going to color his little nose pink. And then there's one more thing, and that's his cute little tail. I need the dark petal pink and the bullet. And you just, I don't do anything on this because it's just so small. I just color it in. And then I'm going to take crumb cake. Actually, no, smoky slate. That's what I was going to use. I'm going to start with like, when you're unsure of how a color is going to do, if it's going to be really light or really dark, um, do it on a spare piece of paper first or do it in light first and if it's too light then do the dark because it's a lot harder to add dark to than take dark off 
So I'm actually going to use the bullet because it's a little easier on these tiny little hoofs. And not worry about shadowing. Things like this that are so small, I never worry about shadowing them because it's just, they're just too small to really get the effect. There's those little hoofs. And now I'm going to get crumb cake. And I also used, what did I use on that? Oh, I used Granny Apple Green. That's right. Um, on the grass. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take just the light or the dark. And they're all marked dark, light. They say right on what they are. A lot of times you can just tell when you hold the two together. So I'm going to take the dark first. And I'm going to color what would be the dirt in there. Little specks. And I'm going to go a little bit under him. Even though it's not there, it's assumed. And then I'll take the light and be real careful because the wording's right under this. I'm just going to put the light right along there. So, and then because we have little pieces of grass, I'm going to take the bullet of this one and just kind of go over them. Nothing else needed. Just a little bit more. And there you have your cute little pig. Isn't he adorable? Got a little black mark. I must have hit the stamp thing to it. So that is it for the blends. They're so easy. Experiment, experiment, experiment with these things. Um, when I first got them, I didn't have a mini at the beginning. You know, and I didn't even really think about getting them because I didn't really think I'd want to start coloring things. I'm going to switch cameras real quick. Boy, that's you know, all white. It kind of just does not like to focus. I'm also going to zoom out. So there you go. Right there. So let's flip back. So I get. So you know, in the beginning, I didn't really want to get the blends when they first came out. It wasn't a matter of the fact that they're expensive because they're not real expensive. In the U.S. market, these are four fifty a piece, or you get the two for you know the combo for nine. But they last a really long time. Um, and this one, this one, the ivory and the bronze are four fifty a piece. But they last a really, really long time. I have done multiple projects with these things, more than what you see on my blog, because, you know, obviously I can't show everything on my blog or it would be jam packed with nothing but cards every day. Um, I need water. They are so worth the money. And the reason I bought these is because my team leader last year um, moved up and became a platinum elite, which is the very, very top in Stampin' Up. And she decided to hold a party for all her team members, an online Facebook party. So we did that, and she was going to do it like when she does one of her online classes. So a cat scratched me earlier. Now there's a piece of skin. Um, and she gave us a list of things that we needed to get if we were going to participate with her making the, these cards that she was going to do. And it was some of the blends. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll go and get them because I want to, you know, want to do this card. So I did. And I tell you, I fell in love with the things. I, from that day forth, made it my goal to get every single one. And I, at this point, except for the ivory and the bronze, I own every single blend because there'd be time like, oh, I need this kind of color. Well, I need this, you know, a lighter green or a darker green or, you know, this kind of green. And I didn't have it because I, maybe I was matching it within to a project. Like maybe I had like a Call Me Clover during Christmas and with like a uh, you know, a real red or a, a cherry cobbler red, you know, and I'm like, well, I need that green to match with my card. So you, you kind of get that way. So at this point, I do have them all. It is an investment. It is, but they are so worth it when you see the project you can make, you know, that we just made today and all we did was two of them. Um, I love these things and they're so worth it. And I do hope that with the next annual catalog, which I get to see next month when I go to on stage in Salt Lake City, I am so happy, 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 happy. I will be leaving the 11th. It's a uh, Thursday to get, because I got to get in because there wasn't a flight soon enough for me because um, my team leader's having a, a big party for us the day before on Friday and I didn't get, I couldn't get a flight in early enough to get down to her house. So I'm coming in Thursday night, so I'm real excited about that. Um, we will get to see the new annual catalog, get to play with new product, get to order it early. I am so thrilled about this. So... I haven't been on a plane in a really long time. I've been 
into airports and in through security checks because I usually have to pick up my brother or sister from the airport when they come visit us. And because they have some mental, um, I have to meet them at the gate. So I'm always used to going through security all the time. Then I do the body scan because I have a stimulator at my back. But I'm used to that. But I haven't been on a plane in, a, oh my gosh, 15 years? So since 9-11, since all the new things. Boy, do I remember before 9-11. My gosh, we used to walk right up to practically the airplane in Ontario and California. So it's been a big change since then. Um, so I'm really excited about this to get and go. So I'll get to see the new catalog. I'll get to be able to tell you if there's new blends in them. I cannot, I can show you the cover, but I cannot show you anything on the inside until uh, it goes live for you, which I believe is June 3rd. Um, but I can show you all the new product and the things I make with the products uh, once I get those. So that's kind of really cool. And there's my cat. There's Shiva. I'm actually going to miss my hands over here. So there she is. <laughs> so, but that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about anything I did today, please ask here. Um, whether you're watching this live or on the replay, please ask. I will answer them the best I can. If I need to do another live to show something that somebody asked, I can do that. Um, but I think that was it. Just I mainly wanted to show you how to do it, how to get the highlights, the shadows, and the different black inks that you do need to use for this. Memento. You need to have to use Memento with this because it has to be an opposite. If you use it with a water-based ink, it's going to run. So, and that's why I showed, you know, these are water, or use it with an alcohol ink, it's going to run because they're alcohol markers. The water base, you can use. These are water base, you can use the blend with these. If you don't want, you want a harsh black line, it's kind of like what I did on my cloud. That's going to be really bright because it's light in front of me. But this little, this little cloud, I used the balmy blue ink pad, stamped the cloud, and then colored it in. So, I'm just going to shadow it over. So, um, perfect. You know, use all, all the ink pads. Just do not use the stays on with the blends because it will run. Yes. Learn from experience. So, thank you very much for joining me today. I am so sorry that I got on here so late. <sighs> Technical issues are driving me crazy. So, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. I will have this up probably on my blog tomorrow and on YouTube, and it will be here on my Facebook page. You can watch it here. So thank you very much for joining me, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Now I'm going to switch over to the other side. I forgot that's where I was. Because I used to do this, of course. So. Bye.